Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at angles in a triangle and angles in quadrilaterals. Now we're going to start off by having a look at angles in a triangle and having a look at a couple of the different types of triangle that we can actually be looking at finding missing angles in. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so looking at this first question. Now the question here says that ACD is a straight line. And if we find that line A to C to D, it forms this straight line down the bottom. Now that's gonna be important on a question like this where there's more than just the triangle because any angles that are together on that straight line are gonna form 180 degrees. And you can see here that one of the angles in the triangle also forms along with that angle X. And those two angles there are gonna add up to 180. So if we can find the angle in the triangle here, which is what it's not asking us really to do, it's asking us to find angle X, but if we can find the angle in the triangle, then we'll be able to find that angle X there, because angles on a straight line add up to 180. Now when it comes to angles in a triangle, angles in a triangle also add up to 180. I'm just going to write that down like this. So angles in a triangle are equal to 180 degrees. So we've got a couple of rules that we're going to use in this question. We're going to look at angles in a triangle, and we're also going to have a look at angles on a straight line. So if we start off by finding the missing angle in the triangle, so this one here, then we can figure that out by looking at the other two. So looking at the other two angles that we have, we've got an angle of 60 and we've got an angle of 50. And if we add those both together, 50 plus 60, that is equal to 110 degrees. Now obviously we know that the angles in the triangle add up to 180, so to find that missing angle, we do 180 and take away the 110 and that leaves us with a remaining angle of 70. So that angle there adds up to 70 degrees. And now you can double check that, those three angles within the triangle will add up to 180. Now when we're looking at this angle here, this is the exterior angle on the outside of the triangle. And there is something special related between that angle and the other two. Because if you think about what we're going to do here to find the missing angle on this part of the straight line, we're just gonna take 70 away from 180. And if we do that, 180, and we take away 70, that adds up to a total of 110. So our final answer for this question is 110 degrees. But if you look into the working out, you can see that we had 110 degrees earlier on in the question, and it came up just here, the total of the other two angles. And that is something that happens when we're looking at the exterior angle on a triangle. The exterior angle is equal to the sum of the other two angles in the triangle. So the 50 and the 60 was actually the same as the angle X. Again, you don't necessarily need that rule, but it is good to know that because it's something that happens when we're looking at these types of questions. Of course, you can always just follow the process that I just did there, which is to find the missing angle, and then obviously just to work it out on a straight line there and taking it away from 180. But there we go, that's one type of question that we're gonna have a look at. Now let's have a look at a different type of triangle. Okay, so there are a few different types of triangles that we can obviously look at. There's a scalene triangle where all of the angles are different, like the last one that we looked at. There is an equilateral triangle, and an equilateral triangle would be drawn like this, and there'd be a little dash on all of the sides like that, and all of the angles in the equilateral are 60 degrees. So it doesn't make for a very interesting question because every question is the same, but this particular triangle here, we only have two of those dashes, and that tells us that it's an isosceles triangle. And an isosceles triangle, the base angles are equal, but the base angles are two particular ones. Now I have this triangle oriented in a flat or sitting on its base at the moment. So for this one here, the base angles are just the two that are sitting on the base. But we could rotate this triangle in any orientation. We could rotate it around and instead have it sitting on this line here. And in which case those two would not be the base angles of an isosceles. So to find the base angles of an isosceles, you look at the two angles that are below, and it's almost like you can think of them as little eyebrows, and underneath them are the eyes. And underneath where the eyes are are the two angles that are the same. So for this one here, if 23 is one of the base angles, then over here, underneath the other, what I call an eyebrow, is also a 23 degree angle. So this one here would be 23 as well. And the reason behind that is because base angles in an isosceles are equal. 
So now we've got those two base angles, we can figure out what's left for the top angle using our fact that angles in a triangle add up to 180. So if we add together what we have, 23 and 23, that adds up to 46. So to find the missing angle, we would do 180, take away the 46, and that leaves us with 134. And that is 134 degrees, and always just check that that adds up to 180 still. So we had 46 for the other two, plus 134, that adds up to 180. So x is equal to 134 degrees. So that is how we're going to go about answering some of these questions. Of course, we could also have an exterior angle on the end of an isosceles triangle. And they're the type of questions that I'm going to get you to practice. So thinking about the base angles and how you would find the other missing angle in the triangle. And then if there is also an external angle, like on the first question, having a go at answering that. So let's have a look at a couple of questions for you to have a go at. OK, so there's two questions here. So pause the video, have a go at both of these, and we'll go over the answers in just a second. OK, so it says here P to Q is a straight line. So just like the first question, we have a straight line involved, which means those two angles next to each other just here next to the 126 are going to form a straight line. It wants us to find the size of two different angles here, so the one next to 126 and the one in the top of the isosceles. So we can start by finding angle X, because we know that those two angles add up to 180. We can do 180, and we can take away 126, and that gives us an angle of 54 degrees. So that is going to be 54, and this isosceles, you can see, underneath the two little dashes, we've got our two base angles. So this one over here is going to be 54 as well. Now we can go about finding the top angle, and if you remembered, there was a link between the other angles and the 126. So you could think of it like that, because that 126 is going to be the sum of these two angles here. Although I think it's probably just as easy just to do 54 add 54, the two base angles, and see what's going to be left over to make that add up to 180. So 54 add 54 is 108, which means our final angle is going to be 180, take away 108, which leaves us with 72. There we go, that's our final answer is 72. Now that looks a little bit strange because again in this diagram here, that angle there actually looks smaller than the other two angles. But when we have questions like this, we always follow the numbers, and we'd normally have a little piece of information saying about how this diagram is not drawn to scale. So always follow the numbers and always follow the rules that you know, but our two answers here were 54 and 72. All right, moving on to the other one. This is an interesting one here because the isosceles triangle, as I said in that second question, has been rotated, and the base angles are underneath these two little dashes, so the two just there. Now it says in the question, B to C to D is a straight line. So we know that next to that 62 is going to be angles on a straight line. So we can do 180 and we can take away the 62 and that leaves us with 118. So that angle just there is going to be 118. Now we need to find the other two angles in the triangle. And again, we know that those two angles there that we've highlighted are going to be the same as they are the two base angles in this isosceles. So if we're going to find those base angles, first we want to know well, what's left over. So if we do 180 and we take away the 118 that we had in our other angle there in the triangle, that again leaves us with 62, as we already knew, because obviously we've just done that calculation. Again, those two angles are the same, so we would do 62 and divide our answer by 2. And that leaves us with 31 degrees, and that would be 31 degrees in both of those. Of course, it only wants this one here. So that would be 31, and this one up here would be 31 as well. So there we go. That is how to work out some of the angles in an isosceles triangle. Obviously, this answer, we only had 1 to 31 degrees, and that is our two questions completed. So let's have a look at involving a quadrilateral and then blending this all together. OK, so we're not going to look at special quadrilaterals, we're just going to look at quadrilaterals. So a quadrilateral has four sides, and the rule for a quadrilateral is that they all add up to 360 degrees. And again, I'm just going to draw like a rectangle sort of shape there, just to show that our rule that we're going to be using. So if all of the angles add up to 360 degrees, we're going to treat this just like our triangles, and that is to add up what we have first, and then figure out what's missing. So at the moment, we've got these three angles, 120, 140, and 58. And if we add those all together, 120, 140, and 58 degrees, and add them all up, let's see what we get. So 8, 11, and 3, so 318. 
So our missing angle there is whatever the difference is between 318 and 360. And we can do that by obviously just working it out. We can do 360, take away the 318, and just work that out. Obviously, if you have a calculator, nice and easy, we can work it out, but we're gonna to have to borrow for this. So eight from 10 is two, one from five is four, and three from three is zero. So that comes out as 42 degrees, and that would be our final answer. Now, of course, on a question like this, you could have an exterior angle as well. For example, maybe we would extend this line, and you could also be asked to work out this missing angle. And again, that would be following on from our previous questions where you're finding angles on a straight line. And in this case, that would be 40 because next to it is 140 and that would then add up to 180. Again, this question didn't have that, but questions can have that. And actually the ones you're gonna have a look at now are gonna have that involved. So let's have a look at a question for you to have a go at. And all you need to remember is that they have to add up to 360 and the fact that angles on a straight line equal 180. Okay, so here's your question. So it says work out the value of x, which is one of the exterior angles on the quadrilateral. It's only a slight extension from what we've just looked at. So pause the video there, have a go at working out this one. We'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna add these three angles together and figure out what's missing inside our quadrilateral. So we have 119, we've got 78, and we have 105. And if we add those all together, let's see what we get. 9 and 8 make 17, plus the 5 is 22. Then we have 7 plus 1, which is 8, plus the 2, which is 10. And then we've got 3, so 302. So to figure out what's missing, again, we want to take that away from 360. So if we do 360, take away 302, and always just take your time with this working out. Again, you might just be able to see the answer there, and that's fine as well. But we'll borrow, we'll take away, we get 8, 5, and 0. So that comes out as 58 degrees. So the missing angle there in our quadrilateral is 58 degrees. Now really on a question like this, I would much prefer it if it said something like A, B, and C, and it told us that A, B, C was a straight line. Because obviously we're assuming this is a straight line here, and that is what I wanted you to do. But most questions would label up those points there and at least tell you that it's a straight line. So now we know that it's a straight line, we can figure out what makes 58 add up to 180 to complete that straight line. So to work that out, we would just do 180, take away the 58 and figure out what's left. Again, we're just doing our methods uh, in terms of written methods. So we'll, take, we'll borrow from the eight. Eight from 10 is two, five from seven is two, and zero from one just leaves us with one. So that angle there would be 122 degrees and that would be the final answer. And hopefully we were able to get that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to put some shapes together and see if we can figure those out as well. And then you'll have your last question to have a practice on. So let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so when it comes to shapes like this, you could have a triangle put together with a quadrilateral, or we could have one like this where a triangle is put together with another triangle. So again, all we're going to use is the rules that we've looked at in this video and just see if we can figure this out. So it says that A to B to C is a straight line. So that tells us that these two angles next to each other have to add up to 180. So that's something we might use at some point. But it says work out the size of angle and it gives us something different here. It says angle BDC. So to find angle BDC, you go from point B to point D and then down to point C. And you can see that by drawing that, it has created this angle just here. So that is the angle BDC, and that is the one we're actually going to be looking for. So again, you can obviously trace your finger over the shape to find that at any point. So let's think about that. We've got a triangle on the right there, this one just here, which is a scalene triangle. There are no lines on that particular one. There is a line just here, obviously because this triangle on the left is an isosceles, but that line there doesn't necessarily relate to the triangle on the right. So the triangle on the right is a scalene triangle. All the angles will be different or could be different. And on the left here, we've got an isosceles. So because we have that top angle in the isosceles, we can definitely work out these two base angles. Again, just finding the ones underneath those two little lines. So at the moment, there's a top angle of 70. So if we do 180, take away 70, it's gonna tell us what's left to be split between the two base angles. And that is adding up to 110. So if we divide that by 2, that will split it into our base angles, and 110 divided by 2 is 55 degrees. So both those base angles are 55. Now that's going to allow us to move into the other shape. As we mentioned at the start, these two angles just here are going to add up to 180. So to find this angle just next to the 55, we would do 180 and take away 55. 
and that gives us an angle of, and again you can do your working out for this, but that gives us an angle of 125 degrees. So this one here is 125. And now you can see we have enough information on this right hand triangle to find our missing angle because we now have two of the other angles. So if we add those two together, we've got 125 and 29. And if we add them up, that adds up to 14, 5 and 1, so 154 degrees. And we want to take that away from 180. So to finish this off, our final bit of working out, we'll do 180, take away 154, and again, if you can do these mentally, that's absolutely fine, but we'll just do our written method for the purpose of this video. 10 take away four is six, seven take away five is two, and one take away one is zero. So that final angle there is 26 degrees, and that is the final answer for our question because there we have found angle B, D, C. Now, of course, this question here are two triangles put together, but as I said, you could have it put together with a quadrilateral. So that's the type of question you're gonna have a go at, and you just need to try and move around the shape, finding any angles that you can until you get to that final answer. So let's have a look at your final question. Okay, so this question says, work out the size of angle X and the size of angle Y. So angle X is within the uh, isosceles triangle there, and angle Y is within the quadrilateral. Again, noticing it is an isosceles because it has our two lines here. So that is your question. So pause the video, have a go at working this out, and we'll go over the answer in just a sec. Okay, so for this question then. Now we've already mentioned it's an isosceles triangle. So if we apply our isosceles triangle rules, we're gonna find these base angles again underneath those two little dashes. So we just wanna figure out what's left as we already have one angle that's 120. So if we do 180 and take away 120, that leaves us with 60 degrees. So we have 60 degrees to split between two angles. So 60 divided by two leaves us with a total of 30 for each of those angles. So if we put those angles of 30 degrees in and then we can maybe move into the quadrilateral. Again, if you look at the quadrilateral, we didn't yet have enough information because we only have one, two out of the four angles. So we need to find what's next to it. Now this line here, A to B to C is a straight line. So just next to that, we want to find this missing angle. So 180, take away the 30 next to it will give us 150. So we'll write that working out down. 180 take away 30 gives us 150 for that angle. And if we draw that in, 150, we now have three angles within our quadrilateral and we can find our fourth missing angle. So add together the three that we have. So we have the 150 that we've just worked out. We have the 108 in the top and we've got the 54 just over there by the letter D. So if we add those all together, eight and four makes 12, five, five and one makes 11, and now we have three. So that's 312 degrees in total, and obviously we're taking that away now from 360. So 360, take away 312. Again, you can do your working out for this, but that comes out as 48 degrees, and that would be our final answer for this question. So there we go, for X we had an answer 30 degrees, and for Y we had the answer 48. So hopefully you were able to work that out and hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you on the next video.